Hey guys, it's Matt, 731 Woodworks. What we're gonna build is a laundry sorter. Uh, just hold the laundry baskets. You can buy these at Walmart or any place. Uh, this one's stained to ebony, but you can paint them or stain them whatever color you want. There are there's three levels, so you can fit in this one you can fit nine baskets. You can build them for six or three or two, or however you want to build them. The principle all stays the same. But so this build, this, we built a nine nine basket sorter. has a back on it so that it doesn't go all the way through. And you have plenty of space between each basket uh, so that uh, you can put your stuff in there, slide them in and out easily. Uh, so if you'll just stick with me in this build, I'll show you what we've done. It's got a top on it to make it look a little nicer. You can use plywood. This I use two sheets of plywood and two one baits. That's all, and some one, uh, two eight foot one fours. So that's all I got in this one. And uh, so it's not a lot of material. It's just a few cuts and uh, just a little bit of time. That's all it takes. So just stay with me and we'll check this one out. Good morning, YouTube. It's a beautiful morning here in Montville, Arkansas. Today, the next couple of days, I'm gonna be building a laundry basket sorter. This, this sorter will hold nine laundry baskets just like this. <coughs> it's a good idea to go ahead and have your laundry basket so you have a reference. Uh, the thing is, this thing is going to slide in and slide out easily. I bought two sheets of sanded three-quarter inch plywood, four, four foot by eight foot sheets uh, at my Lowe's, uh, the local Lowe's, local, it's an hour away. These are $50 a sheet. This is redwood uh, plywood. And so I'm just trying to lay out and get an idea. I want three baskets uh, wide, three baskets high. Just a little bit of clearance between each basket going up, and uh, I, I want them to be fairly snug in there so they're not you know, sitting in there crooked and that they all fit. So basically I'm going to build a frame out of this plywood and then I'm going to use some 2 by material that will screw to the sides that these will slide in on. And then it's all going to be stained like an ebony, I believe, what the customer wants. So I'm laying it out now and I'll show you how I'm doing that next. So I'm laying this out. I know that this is 18 and a half inches wide. I've measured it already. Uh, they're gonna buy, or they've already bought all of their baskets so they know what they're wanting. So I'm laying this out. Now what I'm gonna do on the end here is the plywood will come all the way past this. So, so if this is the bottom, we know that I know that the plywood edge or the inside edge is going to be here because I'm going to let it stick down and I'm going to trigger screw it from the bottom up into the, the plywood from that way. So the first, I'm, I'm measuring 18 and three quarters of an inch. That gives me a quarter of an inch play left or right so that, you know, it's not too tight but it's not too loose either. So quarter of an inch. And then I have to, after I make, measure 18 and three quarters, because this is 18 and a half, so I'll go 18 and three quarters and I need them, there's gonna be a section here and a section there and then the end piece, just like down here. So I know that 18 and three quarters, this is three quarter inch plywood, so I allow three quarters of an inch. And then I measure another 18 and three quarters to here and then allow three quarters of an inch for the next piece of plywood. And then I'm gonna measure another 18 and three quarters of an inch and then stop, that's the end because there's gonna be a piece of plywood here, so I don't have to allow for that three quarters on the other side. So at the end, all together, I got 57 and three quarters of an inch. And that's gonna give me three 18 and three quarter inch bays for these. And then there's gonna be, it's gonna be three high. So what I'm now, I'm trying to lay this out so that I can go ahead and rip the end piece, just rip that off the end. And then I've got my three bays and then I'll rip it the other way uh, the depth wise. Depth. Depth wise, this is about 27 and a quarter inches. And so, well, yeah, 27 and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is probably 28 and a half deep. That gives them plenty of room, but and it's not right at the edge when they push the basket in and when they pull it out, you know, it's, it's, it's pushed in there a little bit. So 
First thing I gotta do though is rip this board to the total length and then to the width. All right, so what I'm doing now, I don't have a track saw or any way really to get this a good straight edge. So what I've done is clamp this straight edge four and a quarter inches away from where I wanna cut because I know that the shoe on this circular saw is four and a quarter inches and from the, from the blade. And I've also went ahead if you'll see the marks, that's where I need to cut and that's where I'm gonna cut. That way I got a little, when I, I get this into a more manageable piece so that I can take it to the table saw and, and cut it at a, where I want it. Uh, after I get this end cut and it ripped this way, I can, I, I can manage it that size. My table saw is not set up. I don't have outfeed tables and stuff so that I can manage a large sheet like this by myself. So this is how I, I deal with that. So I'm gonna rip this piece I've got it supported underneath on both sides and then clearance under the bottom so they don't cut nothing. And then once I rip this all the way across, I'll be able to uh, rip it long ways and I'll have the bottom of my, uh, the, the bottom piece of the, of the frame. And then I'll be able to cut some uprights and then, then the top piece. So that's what we're doing now. All right, I got it uh, a half inch longer than I want lengthwise. But I got it. I'm gonna cut the width that I need because I, I can manage this side of the piece by myself. So I got my old table saw over there hacking as an outfeed table. I'm gonna hold it square to the fence and push it through. So here we go. All right, so now we're gonna crack screw, or I'm gonna drill some crack holes so that pocket holes so I can attach the sides to the top and the bottom. This is the bottom, this piece. I'm gonna set it in here. Uh, I've got it set to three quarters of an inch, which is the size material I'm using on this K5 jig. If you'll look, it says three quarters of an inch, use inch and a quarter screws, uh, and then uh, these two, and then these two. So material thickness and screw length is what you're looking for. And so I know my material thickness is about three quarters of an inch. If you don't have one of these, you can get one of these. Same thing, just in a different form. This just clamps to the edge and then you drill your holes and you set the depth. These move in and out to set your depth. So this is like $20, $25 on Amazon, I think. And this is about $100. So, but this is much more convenient. I just got it screwed to a piece of OSB. So you just pick the side you're going to use as the bottom. And the reason this is more convenient, it's got these, these rests here. Just clamp it down. And I'm going to drill several holes across here on both ends, and then I'm going to do the top the same way, and then we'll attach the uh, uprights. All right, so this is going to be the side. This piece is the bottom. You drill your Craig holes to screw that way. If you're screwing down this way, they're screwing to the edge, so we're going to try to uh, not bust that out. I've got an inch and a quarter screws, because this is three quarter inch material. And I'm going to put a little wood glue in there, just because I'm a believer in wood glue, so stuff makes a good uh, binding agent. It just it works really well. The main thing you're gonna do is you want to make sure your edges are all flush. this off and come back later with a damp rag after we get this piece secured and uh, make sure that's get that excess glue off of there mainly I go by feel here I'm gonna feel that flush and if it feels flush it is flush kind of deal you know so got my drill on low speed or my impact on low speed I just got in there enough to hold it. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way down to the end. That way, you're not trying to fight this thing. If you if you put a screw on each end and then you're messing with the middle, it just seems to work better. 
if you can just work your way down because you can move the, the unsecured in in and out as you need it to keep that to keep it flush I'll kick my drill up one speed just make it a little easier on me and so I'm gonna continue on to get all that flushed out so this is a little tricky because I don't have any help it's just me so what we got now is the bottom of the top are attached with those crank screws. I've got a, a bar clamp here that's holding pressure to keep these things from, from falling outwards. So they're just, it's just barely holding any pressure. This is the other side. I've got to climb up. I'm going to set it up there and screw it in from underneath. And then once I got that box made, it'll be a little bit more structurally sound and I can actually flip it the way it goes with the bottom on the bottom, the top on the top, insert these uh, uprights in the middle so that we can start putting the uh, ledges on for the uh, slides. Now, with two sheets of plywood, what you're gonna wind up with on these end slides here, you're not gonna have enough with this size of a basket holder, you're not gonna have enough for two full sheets right here. So I'm gonna have to wind up splicing two sheets, uh, two pieces of drops, splice them together, and then put them in there. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. All right, so if you can't tell, this I'm laminating uh, two pieces together because uh, I, didn't, I don't have enough out of two sheets of plywood to make my interior pieces. You could leave them short if you wanted to, but I'd rather not. I'd rather them, I'd rather them be, uh, I'd rather them be all the way across we're going to have our, our pieces that are baskets right I don't want to be in there as well but so for now I'm just going to laminate two pieces together that makes them wide enough they're already cut to length and I'm just going to screw this together and then I'll be able to stand it up in there and I'll have a piece wide enough to go in there all the way across so there it is standing up in there I uh just got these pieces joined together to make it wide enough so that we don't have to buy an extra sheet of plywood just for two of these. I mean, you can, if you want to spend another $50, you can do that. It's up to you. But once those brackets are on that the basket's going to ride on and the thing is stained, I don't, and it's in the back, I really don't think you'll ever notice it much that it's actually back there. You're just going to be sliding those baskets in and out. And uh, so I want to test fit. I got this in there. I got my basket. This isn't screwed in yet. It's just sitting in place about where it goes within a sixteenth of an inch there. So you want to make sure those baskets are going to fit. This one does. And it's got about an eighth inch gap on each side. So that's what I wanted. So I'm going to laminate that, the board that goes here, join those together. And uh, then I can tie these two pieces in and anchor them down where I want them. I'm liking it so far. All right, so I got to lay it on the side and you can see the bottom. I've uh, countersunk and screwed in these screws into these uprights. So there's two uprights. I got them counter screwed and then you can see the pocket over from before. So this is going to be the bottom and this is going to be the top. That way when I, I'm going to put a top on it and then those countersunk won't mess with my top. All right, so I got this first bay done with the uh, cleats. So the baskets are sliding in and out. They're spaced evenly, so it's going to be like two and three eighths inch here, two and three eighths inch between these two, and then just a one inch gap between the top and the bottom. I'm going to put a back on it so they can't slide all the way through. If you're doing this by yourself, you're going to need some clamps to clamp this down uh, so that you can measure. This one on the measurements is just it just depends on your basket. So if your basket is from different sizes, the measurements I give you is not going to help you. So get you a basket first before you build this. But I'm gonna put these cleats in and finish this up. And I'm gonna put the back on, this quarter inch plywood back, and then the edge banding on the front. All right, you'll notice that uh, I cut these cleats uh, a little bit thinner than normal. I ripped them at one inch. This is an inch and a half this way and one inch this way. You can do one by ones if you wish. But the one inch is so that it doesn't get too tight when you push this basket in there. You want a little bit of wiggle room, or I did. So I used a, a one inch, anything less than one inch on each side and the basket would actually fall through. So you wanna make sure you get wide enough that it's gonna hold your basket on each side. 
All right, I got all the uh, basket supports in. I set these back two inches, uh, just for reference in case you're doing this at home. This is a one inch block, three quarter inch plywood. I use the inch and a half screws. That way we didn't poke through uh, the outside edge with the screw. I set these back two inches and use glue, use glue. So I glued and screwed them and uh, all of them. Got everything fitting good, so. Next is the back. I'm gonna cut that quarter inch plywood and brad nail it to the back. All right, so now we're gonna put the back on the this uh, basket organizer. I'm gonna put a thin coat of glue all around and down these strips. And then I've got my brad nailer with 5 8 inch brads in it. This is a quarter inch plywood I'm putting on the back, so it'll be plenty to stick to it. And this glue will help hold it. And once I get that done, then I gotta do the edge banding on the front. But first up, let's get this uh, back on there and see how it looks. Now I've got this tacked in place. Uh, one good tip for you. I marked on the table where my dividers were, the outside edges, and then on top where my, where my dividers were. I drew a line right in the center uh, of the divider, all the way up and down. That way, when you go to nail it on, you get it right in the center. And you're not gonna have any sticking through on the other side. Now, once you get this on, you will notice the stability of this frame has, I mean, it, it makes it rigid. It gives it a rigid back. It's not going to sway. Before I put that on there, you could rock this back and forth just a little bit, probably maybe an inch either way. But now that this back's on there, it's solid as a rock. It's not going to. It's not going to be rocking on you when people are putting their stuff in and out of it. So that's a good idea. If you're not going to put a back on it, if you're going to leave it open, I would put some one bys across the back just to steady it up, or maybe an X brace or however you want to do it. But definitely need something on there to keep it steady. Excuse the shakiness because I'm going with the handheld now without the tripod. Just to show you that I've got all six uh, su supports, all six of the basket supports in, and then the backs in there. So on all, on all six supports on each bay. With it pushed all the way to the back, I allow myself about an inch and a half inside in case later they want to come back and put doors on it it'll be able to close but now i got to put the edge banding on the front all the way around the front edges so i'm using edge banding or veneer edging i bought this at lowe's to match my plywood what edge banding does it takes this plywood look those layered look it makes it look like a finished piece so you still you got the same veneer you need a, a flush trim bit or a good steady eye flush trim bit on the router to get that little bit of lip off or a good steady eye and a, and a uh, utility knife you can do that but that's what we're doing now i'm gonna finish up i got that one more to do and it's looking really good what i use on staining is just old t-shirts you can buy a bag of them actually at uh sherwin williams i saw they had some for sale the other day but what I like to do is just put a little on there. And first thing I do is get it in those pocket holes. And then after that, you just wipe the rest of it on as thick as you want it. Just depends on the color you're looking for. Just like that. All right, there it is. Uh, stained ebony. I got a clear coat of uh, General Finishes, uh, high performance water-based top coat in satin on there already it's got a dry i'm gonna put a second coat on i'm only gonna do two coats uh, mainly because the baskets are going to be sliding in and out and uh, i don't know I, I just don't think it needs more than two but you can put as many as you want this stuff is really really good stuff if you uh if you, you can get it on amazon i think it's uh about 30 dollars a quart so it's very expensive but it works very well especially when you if you brush it on or spray it on it just lays down really smooth. I, I, I get better results when I brush it myself 
but all I have is the home right sprayer that home right gave me uh, it's an okay sprayer it does what I need to do as far as paint but as far as putting clear coats on uh, the brush works better for me with this stuff and I sand it lightly between coats with a 600 grit or higher and then I wipe that off with a damp cloth a microfiber cloth and then I'll put another clear coat on uh, after that and let it dry and repeat the process if you're doing more than two coats uh, but it works well and it, especially when you brush it on it'll lay down really smooth uh, and it in my experience whenever I put more than uh, two coats on or more than one coat on so two or more if I sand between coats when I brush that on and let it dry you run your hand over it you can't feel any bumps any dust particles anything it just it's smooth and it dries fast that's one thing I like about the water base and it cleans up quick you can just clean it up with the uh, regular water and uh, so I highly recommend this stuff I'm not sponsored I buy this from Home Money it works really well and it comes out looking really good but this is the finished product uh, I'm gonna let this dry and put another coat on but other than that uh, this is what we got and it come out really nice I'm gonna take one more video of the top and show you what I did I just take I took two 10 foot one baits cut them at five foot uh, pieces and set them on the top and I screwed them in from underneath I don't think I video that part but you uh, it's probably not the best way to do it because of expansion and stuff but I just got screws uh, two screws here 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 all the way down and uh, I also use wood glue on the top just to give it a little something extra but I'll show you what the top looks like and then uh, that's gonna do it for this video I hope you enjoy it all right and there's the top like I said it's just uh, two 10 foot 1 by 8s and I cut them at 5 foot lengths and then I used a quarter inch roundover bit on the edges to get that rounded over edge so it wouldn't be so sharp but they look really good and uh, it just gives it a little finished piece you can actually use another piece of plywood up there I didn't want to spend another $50 to get one sheet of plywood to do the top with so I just went with the 1 by 8s because they're uh, a lot less expensive and uh, it just gives it a little more finished look if you got that top on there if you don't you're going to see those pocket holes in your uh, counter sump holes where you put these dividers in here so that's why i went ahead and put a top on it i think it looks better it gives it a little the, the piece a little more finished look 